We're gonna start the list with Waynesville, Ohio. This is said to be one of the most haunted towns in the state, which is saying a lot for Ohio. Waynesville, Ohio is founded way back in 1797, and it has quite the history and its fair share of spooky stories. So sure, folks flock here for the antiques and the annual sauerkraut festival, but it's also known as a haunt for ghost hunters. You'll hear some odd sounds in the old buildings. You'll see shadowy figures peeking out of windows. With more than 15 spots rumored to be haunted, Waynesville has no shortage of creepy tales. Like the Hamill House Inn, for example. Staff here have reported seeing a mysterious man in room 4, and some say a young salesman vanished there ages ago, possibly meeting a dark end. Then there's the Stetson House, where Louisa Stetson, Lyric, supposedly still roams, dressed to the nines in old-fashioned gear. There's also the former friend's boarding home, now a museum where you might hear the sounds of ladies bustling about as if they're cooking up a storm, even though there's no kitchen anymore. Now we move on to Mansfield, Ohio. This place isn't just said to be haunted by, you know, lame ghosts who will just pass right through your body if they ever try to punch you. It's also haunted by a big, scary, hairy, orange-eyed beast referred to as Orange Eyes. And you wouldn't want to get punched by Orange Eyes. But let's start with the haunted stuff. One of the most famous haunted locations in Mansfield is the Ohio State Reformatory. Known for its imposing architecture and eerie atmosphere, once a prison, the reformatory is said to be haunted by the spirits of former inmates who suffered under harsh conditions. Visitors have reported strange noises, apparitions, and unsettling feelings while exploring it. And aside from the reformatory, Mansfield is also home to, again, tales of a cryptid known as the Orange Eyes, described as a creature with glowing orange eyes and a menacing presence. Sightings of the Orange Eyes have been reported in the wooded areas surrounding the city. Some believe it to be a Bigfoot-like creature. Others think it could be paranormal in some way. Some even believe it to be extraterrestrial in origin. Next up, we have Boston. Boston Mills, aka Helltown. This is kind of like the Chernobyl of Ohio. So Helltown, Ohio, within the boundaries of Boston Township is full, and I do mean full, of eerie legends and ghost stories. It was once a thriving community known as Boston Mills, but this area faced an abrupt evacuation in the early 70s at the hands of the U.S. government, purportedly to establish the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. Now the empty homes, the abandoned buildings and desolate streets that are left behind have this eerie vibe about them. You see, some locals insist that the evacuation wasn't solely because of the government's land claim. There are stories about much darker reasons. Apparently there was toxic contamination with contaminants seeping into the soil. There are also stories about mutated animals and even people lingering around in the old abandoned homes. Not only that, but after the evacuation happened, there are said to have been satanic rituals carried out in the abandoned town. So, lots going on. Next up, we have Athens, Ohio, which has multiple haunted spots. There's a haunted abandoned asylum, a haunted cemetery, even the university is haunted. And there's more cemeteries, which are also all haunted. Every place in this town has ghosts. Half the population who lives here aren't even alive. Now, the haunted reputation mostly comes from its history with the former Athens Lunatic Asylum, now known as the Ridges, which is actually part of Ohio University's campus. The asylum's grounds still have old old cemeteries where former patients were buried. One of the creepiest stories about the asylum is the story of Margaret Schilling. She was a former resident who died in the attic in 1979, and she was left there for so long that her decomposing body left a stain on the floor that remains to this very day. Wilson Hall, a dorm on Ohio University's campus, is rumored to be built on top of an old cemetery. The fourth floor of Wilson Hall is said to be haunted, with reports of apparitions, strange noises, and slamming doors. There's also a rumor about a student who took their own life in one of the rooms there. In addition to the Ridges and Wilson Hall, several cemeteries in the Athens area are rumored to be haunted, including Sims, Haynes, Hanning, Cuckler, Higgins, Zion, Hunter, Slaughter, quite the name for a cemetery, Cutler, Mansfield, and Peach Ridge Cemetery. Some say these cemeteries are actually arranged in the shape of a pentagram 
with Wilson Hall right at the center. Next, we have Kirtland, Ohio, which doesn't have much of a reputation of being haunted itself. What it does have, though, is a reputation for mutated creatures that are said to stalk the forests. Creatures known as melon heads. Deep within its dense forests are tales of the mysterious and eerie creatures known as the melon heads. According to local lore, the melon heads are said to be humanoid beings with these abnormally large bulbous hairless heads resembling melons. I picture them kind of looking a bit like Hey Arnold, which would be a lot less cute in real life. Uh, these elusive creatures are rumored to lurk in the shadows of the forests, emerging only under cover of darkness to stalk unsuspecting travelers. Now, there are a few different versions of the melon head's tale, but the most well-known story or explanation for these creatures was that a mad doctor was conducting unethical experiments on a bunch of orphans. Experiments which caused their bulbous cranium to uh, take shape. At one point, the orphans got fed up with being experimented on, and they hated their melon bulbous dumb heads, and they banded together, killing the mad scientist before setting his home on fire and running off into the woods. Sightings and encounters of melon heads, though, continue to be reported to this day. Cleveland is also said to have some creepy paranormal stuff going on, mostly from the supposedly haunted Franklin Castle, which is said to be Ohio's most haunted house. The Franklin Castle is a towering structure with a dark and mysterious past. Built in the late 19th century, Franklin Castle has long been rumored to be haunted by restless spirits. Stories of tragedy, death, and mystery surround it. Legend has it that the castle's original owner, Haynes Tideman, suffered multiple personal losses within its walls, leading to rumors of curses and supernatural stuff going on. Pretty soon after his family moved in, Tideman's mother died, his sister then died of diabetes, and over the next three years, more and more of his siblings died prematurely. Only two of the six actually made it to adulthood, so it's really no wonder why the place is said to have some darkness lingering in it. Over the years, visitors and residents have reported strange sounds, apparitions, and unexplained phenomena within the castle. Despite renovations and changes in ownership, one thing has always stayed the same, the paranormal activity. Next up on the list is Put-In Bay. Now, Put-In Bay, Ohio may be known for its sunny shores and summer fun, but lurking beneath the surface, there's some creepy stuff going on. From what I've read, there are three major haunted hotspots. First up, we have the Park Hotel. This hotel has stood since the late 1800s, and it's seen its fair share of guests come and go. Go. also means there's a lot of history, some of it dark. Some visitors have reported more than just creaky floorboards and old-fashioned charm. Rumor has it that the Park Hotel is haunted by the ghost of a young woman who tragically fell to her death from one of the upper floors. Guests have reported strange noises, flickering lights, and even sightings of a figure wandering the halls late at night. Next, there's the Dollar House, a Victorian mansion. Legend has it that the original owner, Valentine Dollar, was involved in some shady dealings during Prohibition, including smuggling alcohol and hiding it in secret passages throughout the house, and today visitors claim to hear whispers and footsteps echoing through the empty rooms, as if the ghosts of Dollar's past are still lingering within the walls. Then there's the Crew's Nest, a historic home that sits on a cliff overlooking Lake Erie. This mansion was once owned by Jay Cook a banker and financier, but there's a tragic tale of one of Cook's daughters that's left its mark on the property. The story goes that the young girl fell to her death from one of the windows, and her ghost is said to still haunt the grounds, appearing as a fleeting figure in white. Moving on to Marietta, Ohio next, a charming town that also has its fair share of ghost stories, and most of the scary stuff happens at Hotel Lafayette. This hotel was built in the late 1800s. Over the years, guests and staff report strange occurrences and unexplained phenomena while staying there, leading many to believe that the hotel is haunted by spirits. One of the most famous ghostly residents of the Hotel Lafayette is said to be a woman named Sarah, who reportedly took her own life in one of the rooms, and guests have reported hearing disembodied cries, footsteps, and even seeing apparitions wandering the halls late at night. Others have claimed to feel an eerie presence or sudden drops in temperature, but Sarah isn't the only ghost rumored to haunt the Hotel Lafayette. Some guests have reported encountering the spirit of a young girl who plays tricks on unsuspecting visitors by moving objects or flickering lights. A real brat of a ghost. But at least she's still having fun in the afterlife, so 
props to her. Next up, we have another kind of Chernobyl-like Ohio small town, Cheshire. Only a handful of people still call this place home. At one time, this was a bustling town, but barely anyone lives there at this point, and that's because of the environmental hazards caused by a nearby power plant. The plant emitted a thick, sooty residue and chemical fogs that would blanket the town sporadically. Obviously, not at all uh, safe for residents to live in that kind of condition, so many abandoned their homes and started new lives in other places. Eventually, the power company responsible for the pollution was compelled to just buy out the entire town. But finally, we have the abandoned town of Moonville. Love that name, Moonville. This is a ghost town with only a few traces left behind. A cemetery, some foundations, and a desolate railroad tunnel. But what sets Moonville apart are the chilling tales that surround its abandoned tunnel. Stories that have been passed down for decades. One of the most famous specters haunting Moonville is that of Theodore Lawhead, the unfortunate engineer whose spirit is said to roam the tracks. Back in the 1880s, Lawhead met a tragic end when his train collided head-on with another. Now visitors report sightings of a ghostly figure with a lantern in his hand pacing along the track and disappearing into the tunnel. Then there's the story of the Brakeman, a ghost believed to be that of a young man who met his demise after a night of heavy drinking. Legend has it that he fell asleep on the tracks, never to awaken again because he was too sauced to wake up before a train ran him over. Then there's the Lavender Lady. Some say they've seen a frail elderly woman walking near the tunnel only for her to vanish into thin air, leaving behind the lingering sense of lavender. Some say she's the spirit of Mary Shea, or Shay, who met her end on those very tracks. There's also the spirit known as the Bully, believed to be the restless spirit of Baldy Keaton a Moonville resident who liked a good old fist fight. The tale goes that after a scuffle at the saloon, Baldi was found dead on the tracks. As for how he died, no one knows for sure, but now his ghost is said to loom above the tunnel, glaring at unsuspecting visitors and even pelting them with stones. We're gonna kick things off with Loveland. How on earth did I not put Loveland, Ohio in part one? Loveland is home to one of the strangest creatures said to stalk the state, the Loveland Frog. But it's also home to a supposedly haunted castle. Loveland Castle was constructed by Harry Andrews. A uh, very interesting man this guy was. He had a lot of interest in knights and medieval lore. Andrews was born in 1890. He worked as a medic during World War I. He then contracted meningitis during the war and was believed to be dead. His body was actually moved to the morgue, like he was done. But when his body was taken back to the hospital to be dissected, the doctors were like, hey, you know what, why not? Let's just see if we can get his heart beating again with adrenaline. Miraculously, it worked. Andrews, who'd now spent a whole bunch of time in Europe and then almost died, was now even more into medieval history and returned home with this newfound determination to build his very own castle. Eventually, he constructed Loveland Castle along the banks of the Little Miami River. Andrews then moved into the castle, where he lived until he died in 1981. Today, the castle is the headquarters for the Knights of the Golden Trail, an organization Andrews started dedicated to upholding the principles of knighthood, but Harry Andrews' spirit is said to still roam the castle grounds. Objects will mysteriously disappear or move, and voices are heard echoing through the corridors. And as I said at the top, of course, Loveland's supernatural reputation doesn't end with this castle. One of the most famous legends is that of the Loveland Frog, or frogs. There have been multiple large frog-like creatures spotted near the Little Miami River over the years. Next up, we have Ashtabula, which is said to be haunted by the spirits of a tragic train disaster. So on December 29th, 1876, the Pacific Express No. 5 crossed the Ashtabula Bridge. But because of particularly cold weather and structural weaknesses, the bridge collapsed, sending the train plummeting into the icy river below. And in the end, 98 people died. The scene must have been absolutely horrific, with rail cars crashing into each other and igniting in flame. And firefighters were unable to put out the flames, so people just cried out in pain and horror as they were consumed by fire, trapped in the wreckage. It was one of the worst rail accidents in US history, and the screams of those victims 
still haunt the area to this day. Some say you can occasionally hear them above the rush of the river. The Chestnut Grove Cemetery holds the remains of 19 of these victims, but their spirits are said to be very much active. Visitors to the cemetery have reported seeing ghostly apparitions. But along with the victims of the tragedy, there's also said to be the ghost of Charles Collins, one of the developers of the bridge. Witnesses claim to have seen his guilty spirit weeping at the sight of the tragedy or crying over people's graves. Some claim to see tiny lights even hovering below the new bridge where the old one once stood. Rogue's Hollow near Doylestown, Ohio has its fair share of spooky tales as well. It's said that a mill worker died in a pretty gruesome manner, getting crushed by the mill wheel, and now his spirit is said to guard the area, keeping outsiders at bay. Then there's the eerie tale of the headless horse and the ghost oak tree. So at one time there was a large oak tree near Route 65, and one of its branches hung so low that riders on horseback had to duck as they passed under it. Well, one story goes that the branch was weighed down extra low with ice, and a poor horse just ran into it at top speed, lobbing off its head. From that point on, riders passing the area late at night would occasionally come across a devilish figure riding a ghostly, headless horse. Next up, we have Oxford, Ohio, which has one of the coolest ghosts, a phantom motorcyclist. So the story goes that back in the 40s, there was this farmer's daughter. She was head over heels for this guy who was a bit of a James Dean type, leather jacket, motorcycle, very rebellious. Also a lot like me, minus the motorcycle, the leather jacket, and the rebellious part. His name was James, that's the similarity. And her father was not too thrilled about their relationship. He thought the guy was trouble, and he probably wasn't wrong. He forbade his daughter from seeing him. So to avoid her father's disapproval, they met up in complete secret, usually late at night when the coast was clear. And when it was, the girlfriend would flash the porch light three times as a signal for him to come over. Well, one night, the boyfriend decided he wanted to take their relationship to the next level and propose. He saw the three flashes and revved up his motorcycle, racing towards her house to pop the question. But as soon as he sped down the road, he lost control of his bike, crashing into a barbed wire fence. And ever since, people claim they've seen this mysterious light flickering in the distance along the road where he crashed, said to be the spirit of the phantom motorcyclist, still trying to reach his girl's house to ask for her hand in marriage. Next on the list is Chillicothe, where there were a series of mysterious disappearances between 2014 and 2015. Now, it all began in the spring of 2014 when Charlotte Trago vanished without a trace. Trago, uh, who had struggled with addiction, was a mother of two, and she remains missing to this day. Shortly after Trago's disappearance, another woman, Tamika Lynch, who was a friend of Trago's, went missing as well. Her body was discovered three weeks later by kayakers. It's pretty obvious there was foul play, but the official cause of her death was deemed inconclusive. Then there was the disappearance of Wanda Lemons in November of 2014. She's also never been found. On Christmas Day 2014, Shasta Hemelrick went missing. Her body was later recovered from the Scioto River. Authorities claim she took her own life, but her family, as well as many others, think someone took it from her. Then there was the disappearance and discovery of Tiffany Sayers' body in May 2015. Her remains were found in a creek covered by a sheet. And the final victim, Timberly Claytora's body, was found near an abandoned building. She died at the hands of a firearm. And the case just would have been handled completely differently if these women hadn't been battling addiction. That was the one thing connecting all these. They were all involved in that world. And there's just this kind of lax attitude when it comes to situations like this, unfortunately, where authorities are like, well, you know, they're part of that world. This is just what happens. So it really hasn't got the attention that it deserves. Now we move on to the town of Lancaster. Here, there used to be a home 
with an incredibly dark past, the Mudhouse Mansion. So the mansion's origins go back to the mid 19th century, when it was built as a grand estate for a wealthy family. But as time went on, the home fell into disrepair and eventually it was abandoned and left to decay. And over the years, all these urban legends started to form around it. One of the most infamous stories is that the family had actually died in the mansion. Some versions of the tale claim that they were killed by an unknown assailant. Others go that they'd been driven to madness by some sinister force lurking within the mansion's walls. The Mudhouse Mansion was even said to be the birthplace of Bloody Mary herself. The mansion was demolished in 2015, but some folks will still claim to see ghostly figures of the mansion's former residents wandering the grounds, forever trapped in a limbo between the worlds of the living and the dead. All right, one of the strangest unsolved mysteries in Ohio has to be the Circleville Letters case. Now I'm gonna paraphrase here because there's a lot of detail. We could probably do an entire video about this case alone. But I'll go over it. It all started in 1976. Residents of Circleville started receiving these unsettling, threatening letters containing all these intimate details of their personal lives. The letters were postmarked from Columbus, Ohio, but there was no return address. One of the receivers of these letters was Mary Gillespie, a bus driver. She was accused in one of these letters of having an affair with the school superintendent and the letters just kept coming in from this unknown sender. Then Mary's husband, Ron, also became a target. He received a chilling ultimatum to end his wife's supposed affair or face dire consequences, death. Ron was found dead in his pickup truck after a mysterious phone call, which had seemingly confirmed his suspicion about the letter writer's identity. He'd left in his pickup truck with a firearm, but was found dead soon after having crashed into a tree. Now authorities ruled Ron's death an accident, but then the letters continued. A number of residents received letters saying that Sheriff Dwight Radcliffe, who had investigated Ron's death, had been involved in a cover-up. At one point, this mysterious writer even planted threatening signs along Mary Gillespie's bus route, one of which she went to take down, only to find out it'd been booby-trapped. If Mary had pulled the sign down in a particular way, a small pistol would have fired at her. Now, one man was arrested, Paul Freshor, but it's never been 100% verified that he was behind these letters. Eventually, he got out on parole. Case is still a mystery to this day. In the Hills and Dales Metro Park in Kittering, Ohio, there's a structure with a very shadowy past. The Haunted Witch's Tower, also known as Frankenstein's Castle. It was completed in 1941, and this 30-foot tall tower was constructed by boys with the National Youth Administration using salvaged stone. Its purpose was to provide panoramic views of the community country club, with its lookout platform offering vistas stretching up to 15 miles. But because of how remote the tower is, a lot of young hooligans started flocking there in the 60s. Graffiti covered its walls and bottles of liquor and beer cans littered the grounds. Even shingles torn from the roof and glass bottles became ammo for attacks on passing cars below on Pearson Boulevard. Then in 1967, during a thunderstorm, a young woman named Peggy Harmison sought shelter inside the tower with her boyfriend, Ronnie Stevens. Bad move. Lightning struck the tower, killing Peggy instantly. Her body was found on the 11th step, half covered in severe burns. Ronnie survived, but he was found in a state of uncontrollable shock, apparently running around screaming. And ever since that night, there have been stories about the ghost of Peggy haunting the tower. All right, let's switch things up with a haunted golf club. You don't hear about haunted golf clubs very often. Legend has it that in the 60s, a bride fell from a balcony at Oakhurst Golf Club in Grove City, Ohio. And her ghost is said to haunt the establishment to this very day. One of the most frequently reported sightings involves the ghostly figure of a woman dressed in white, believed to be the ghost of the bride. The upstairs kitchen, located near the ballroom where events are held, is said to be a hotspot for paranormal activity. Employees have reported hearing unexplained sounds of pots and pans clanging and knocking late at night, only to discover that items have been mysteriously rearranged by morning. 
All right, we're finishing things off today with, with Minerva. It all began in August of 1978 when the Caton family reported encountering a strange creature near their home. According to the Catons, they were enjoying a quiet evening when they heard unusual noises coming from outside. They came face to face with this towering ape-like creature standing over seven feet tall. The creature reportedly had shaggy dark fur covering its body, it had glowing red eyes, and emitted this foul odor. The Catons quickly ran back to the safety of their home and phoned the cops. In the days that followed, all these other sightings of a mysterious creature were reported by other residents of Minerva. Witnesses described similar encounters with a large, hairy beast lurking in the shadows, but none of the stories were scarier than the Catons, who said the creature returned to their property several times, hurling rocks at their home, staring at them through their kitchen window, and even killing their dog. It's uh, one of the most violent Bigfoot cases ever reported. We're starting things off with Miamisburg in Montgomery County, which has some pretty spooky spots, including an Arby's. All kinds of disturbing stuff is said to go on at this fast food joint. Employees closing up for the night alone have said they've heard laughter coming from the basement, only to find no one there. Some will also report having their hair pulled by some unseen force. There's also a ghostly man who sometimes is seen staring into the oven during opening or closing hours. He'll grow Grove Cemetery is probably the most well-renowned haunted hotspot in this town, though some visitors will say they see a young girl crying over a grave. But when approached, she'll just stare at you for a moment before vanishing into thin air. There's also the grave of a preacher's daughter who took her own life after being disowned by her family. A Bible was said to have sat on her grave, with stories of it appearing broken one instant but then perfectly fine the next. Next up is East Liverpool, which is home to a couple haunted parks, a haunted cemetery, and of course, a haunted phone booth. As silly as a haunted phone booth might sound though, uh, the story is actually pretty spooky. So apparently a young man was killed in the area and his ghost haunts the street that he died on. Some will say that on some nights, especially Saturdays during the month of March, passersby will hear ringing coming from the booth. And if you answer the phone, you might just hear a somber, ghostly voice on the other end telling you to look across the street. And if you do, you just might see a headless young man waving before vanishing into the shadows. Now we move on to Sandusky, Ohio, which has a few notoriously haunted spots. One is the Sandusky County Historic Jail and Dungeon. This place, which was built in the 1840s, is no longer a jail or a dungeon, or I guess it technically is a dungeon and a jail, but it's just not operating as one. There are tours of the place though, and the staff and many people who visit claim to have experienced some pretty eerie stuff. Something that's said to happen every so often has to do with the courthouse security system. So sometimes at around two or three in the morning, the motion alarm just goes off, detecting someone or something outside the dungeon door. Whatever it is will then make its way up the steps to the first floor of the courthouse. Now I say whatever it is, because when security cameras get checked, there's usually no one in the footage. But on rare nights, there is a shadowy figure with a brimmed hat seen spotted sitting on a bench outside the courthouse. The fire alarm has also been known to be pulled even when nobody's near it. Whatever spirits are haunting this place, they seem to really enjoy loud, obnoxious noises. And on top of all that, you also have your typical disembodied sounds like voices and footsteps when there's nobody else around. We're gonna stay in Sandusky for a bit though and talk about Cedar Point. Cedar Point is one of the most popular amusement parks in the US, but it also has a bit of a dark side. When we think of haunted theme parks, it's usually the abandoned ones where we picture all the paranormal stuff going on, but Cedar Point is still very much open. It was built in 1870 though, so it's been around for a while, and any theme park that old has definitely had its fair share of horrific accidents. Get it? Fair share theme park? 
All right. One of the most haunted attractions was the Frontier Town Carousel, which is no longer there, but people would often claim to catch a glimpse of a ghostly woman riding one of the horses. She's said to be the wife of the man who carved the horses on the carousel. He'd killed her after finding out that she was cheating on him with a jockey. So now her spirit is attached to the carousel, coming out at midnight to ride a fake horse every full moon, which she's probably not too plussed about. For a woman who really seemed uh, to like being around horses, a wooden one probably just doesn't cut it. Not to mention uh, that she's stuck in a, a pretty boring ride that was built by the dude who shot her to death. So there's also that. Next on the list we have the town of Wooster. You thought the haunted Arby's was intriguing? Try the haunted Pizza Hut in this town. Yeah, you can't even grab a slice of pizza in Ohio without something paranormal or weird happening. I'd love to do a road trip through Ohio visiting every haunted fast food restaurant, actually. You could, could call it like Fast Frights Ohio tour or something. So this Pizza Hut is part of a big plaza that was all built over the grounds of a former insane asylum. So there could be some lingering spirits in the area, most of whom seem to really stick to the Pizza Hut. There's also a Taco Bell in the plaza, which some paranormal stuff is said to go on, but there's not as many stories about that place because there's probably like five people who go to who goes to Taco Bell, especially when you have a Pizza Hut right there. I'm gonna get tons of comments now from like like Taco Bell fans being like Taco Bell's the best. I don't know. I just think it's kind of mediocre. Staff at the Pizza Hut though have seen figures vanish into the walls. One manager who was closing up for the night was startled to hear footsteps following her, and then turned around to see nothing but a white mist hovering in the air. Marietta in Washington County. This town is probably most well known for Anchorage Mansion, which is said to be very haunted. It was built by Douglas Putnam for his wife Eliza in the 1800s, but it's said Eliza died shortly after moving in. And people claim to have seen her ghost wandering around or peeking out of windows. Later on, the mansion was turned into a nursing home where residents also reported seeing Eliza's ghost. Some say there are secret tunnels under the mansion as well, maybe from the Underground Railroad, but nobody really knows if they're haunted as well, but I'm, it's Ohio, so I'm, I'm presuming they are. Marriott is also home to a haunted comfort inn where the televisions are known to turn off and on by themselves, doors open and close on their own, and guests will occasionally wake up with the feeling of cold hands on their body, luckily to find that no one is there in the room with them. I'd, I'd rather have a ghost in my room than a chilly intruder. Again in Washington County we have the village of Fredericksburg which is home to Robin Industries which does custom molding for rubber and plastic components. It was formerly the Fredericksburg pottery site which had a pretty dark past and the building is rumored to be haunted by multiple spirits. There were two major tragic events at Fredericksburg pottery site including two devastating fires and a fatal train accident that took the lives of 12 people. So employees at the site have reported some pretty eerie encounters, like feeling sudden cold spots. Now, I usually kind of roll my eyes at when people say cold spots. It's like, all right, uh, spots cold, whatever. But these are extra strange because staff will report feeling them behind machinery that runs at extremely high temperatures. One story involves the ghost of a man blamed for the train derailment, who is said to show up in the mold room. In the shipping room, sightings of an older gentleman believed to be the former mayor who witnessed the tragic train accident have also been reported. Then there's the apparition of an elderly woman who's been seen swinging doors open and shutting off machinery. The stairwell leading to the office is said to be guarded also by a spirit, with one employee experiencing a strong stench and then a sudden gust of wind that nearly knocked her down the stairs. And unless someone was eating some bad burritos from Taco Bell that day, I think it might have been a ghost. So I know we've covered Dayton, Ohio already, but I didn't mention the Wright Patterson Air Force Base, which is said to be one of the most haunted spots in the state. It's even been featured on Ghost Hunters. One eerie story involves the ghost of a young Vietnamese boy believed to have perished in one of the museum's helicopters. Visitors have reported sightings of the boy wandering the museum grounds after dark. And of course, then they go up to talk to him and he's not actually there. It's not just some kid who like ran into the place. There's also a German World War II fighter plane said to be inhabited by the ghost of its pilot. Visitors claim to have seen the pilot waving from the plane's window. Seeing as it's the ghost of a German World War II fighter pilot though, I'm not sure if what he's doing 
is actually a wave. The helicopter named Hopalong is said to be haunted by a pilot who met a tragic end, with staff reporting sightings of him desperately flipping switches in a futile attempt to escape. The Black Maria, known for its secret missions during the Vietnam War, is also said to be haunted by the spirits of soldiers who died on board. The boxcar plane, famous for dropping the atomic bomb on Nagasaki, is also rumored to be haunted by a young boy who is said to dart past it during the night. Haunted inns, always a staple of small villages, and Granville in Licking County, Ohio has one of its very own, the Buxton Inn. This place dates back all the way to 1812, so plenty of history with this place. Even Abraham Lincoln stayed here, and some of those who were escaping from the Underground Railroad stayed here at one time as well. So with all the people who have passed through the doors and slept under this roof, all the history surrounding the building, it probably comes as no shock that some energy is said to linger within the inn. Not only do you have the spirits of past guests who have long since passed, but even former deceased employees are said to have never fully left. Like one of the previous owners, Ethel Bonnie Houston, for example, who's become known as the Lady in Blue. Several guests have claimed to see a woman in a blue dress roaming the hallways, only to walk right through closed doors or just vanish into thin air altogether. Some have also smelt cigar smoke out of nowhere before spotting a man who also vanishes into thin air. This is said to be the ghost of the inn's founder, Major Buxton. And we're to finish things off with Loudonville in Ashland County. This place is known for its two supposedly haunted spots, one of which is a hotel, the other a park. First, there's Mohican State Park, which is said to be haunted for a couple different reasons. Mainly though, there used to be an asylum on the land in the 1800s, which might help explain some of the ghostly stuff going on. Witnesses have also reported seeing a mysterious light in the park for over two decades. Then there's Landel's Mohican Castle, which is actually a hotel and a damn cool looking one too. Looks like something you'd see in Norway. It was built on the grounds of a former English slash German church. The story goes that in the late 1800s, a dispute over language during worship services led to the church mysteriously burning down after the Germans decided to relocate their relatives' graves. Since the current owners acquired the property in 1991, a series of unexplained fires have just been plaguing the place, including the destruction of a book factory in 92 and an on-site restaurant in 2007. Some believe the land is just cursed, with guests reporting sightings of a girl in blue in the graveyard and hearing crying in the cemetery and pool building. People will also claim to see Civil War-era soldiers in their rooms. Thank you.